when applying Fourier transforms, you may encounter certain type of integrals when you try to transform back the quotient uh, uh, of a, a sine or cosine and some polynomials. How can you compute such an integral? You cannot find it in the derivative. We need to be careful here. Sine and cosine are bounded as real functions, but become unbounded as function of a complex variable. In this video, you will see how you can still choose an appropriate complex function f of z for this type of integrals, which allow us to use contour integration for Fourier integrals. So, what's the problem? Now in general, uh, you have some integral uh, f of x times cosine ax dx from minus infinity to infinity or with a sine. Well, let's just do the example with the cosine. Now, the problem is that the norm of the cosine or az, if you view it as a complex function, is cosine squared times ax. Okay, that's fine, it's just bounded by 1, uh, times the sine hyperbolic ai. And that's not fine, because if y uh, is either positive or negative, doesn't matter, the second part blows up. So if you are going to include a cosine of az somewhere in your uh, uh, in your contour integral, you will face problems is because whether you close your contour like this in the upper half plane or like that in the lower half plane, you will have problems because your function is blowing up there. And you always want to show that your integral vanishes. So that's not going to work. So what's the idea? What's the solution? Well, you often do a trick like this. The cosine of az is the real part of e to the power i az. And the norm of e to the power i az equals e to the power minus a y. And in the upper half plane, that one decays. So you cannot use cosines, but you can use something like e to the power i az instead, because that one will decay for big values of z. So we're already thinking ahead quite a lot here. So let's do an example. The integral i from 0 to infinity, cosine 2x of x squared plus 4 squared dx. I'm going to compute that. Oh, just forget about finding antiderivatives, by the way, that's horrible. Uh, well, first of all, we want to be able to, we want to integrate from minus infinity to infinity. Well, it's possible because we have an even function, so our integral equals one half times integral minus infinity to infinity. Then we want to get rid of the cosine. We don't want to have cosines. But the cosine is the 2x equals the real part of e to the power 2ix. And then we can uh, take the real part out because we have seen uh, before that the a uh, real part of an integral equals the integral of the real part of some function, so you can take the real part out. Uh, which means that we now have to find this integral over here. This is the power 2ix over x squared plus 4 squared. Uh, now, let's use contour integration. Uh, we have set the stage already, so we choose f of z e to the power 2iz over z squared plus 4 squared. And what we use as a contour? Well, we want to contain the whole real axis, so we integrate from minus r to r. And how are we going to close? We think again ahead about this e to the power minus 2y. So in the upper half plane, we're going to be all right. So we close it with our big CR in the upper half plane. And we have a chosen RF uh, such that this is going to work. In this first step, again, you think ahead already for the consecutive steps. If you did your first step correctly, all the other steps will follow smoothly. If you don't think correctly ahead in the first step, or if you mis make mistakes here, then you will, well, find out uh, later on, and you just start all over again. So better think ahead first. So that's the first step. Go on to the second step, the theorem of residues. Well, the integral c total f of z dz equals 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. Uh, f of z is analytic everywhere on an inside c, except for a pole of order 2 at 2i. Two uh, f of z has another pole here at minus 2i, but that's outside the contour, so it doesn't uh, contribute to our integral. So our uh, integral along c total will be 2 pi i times the residue of f of z at 2i. Then we have to find the residue. Well, we can write f of z as e to the power 2iz times z plus 2i times z minus 2i squared, or times z plus 2i squared times z minus 2i squared. And we have a pole of order 
2, so phi of z will be z minus 2i squared times f of z, and you see that that will cancel out this factor, z minus 2i squared over here, so we are left with e to the power 2i over z plus 2i squared. Then we have to compute the residue, so we need phi prime, uh, plug in 2i and divide by 1 factorial, well, division by 1 factorial is just 1, so that's, that's okay. So compute phi prime is the quotient rule, uh, the derivative of the numerator 2i times e to the power 2iz times denominator uh, z plus 2i squared minus the derivative of the denominator which equals 2 times z plus 2i times the numerator e to the power 2iz divided by the numerator squared and then you just plug in 2i. Uh, so in the uh, denominator you get 4i to the power 4, so 4 to the power 4 plus i to the power 4 equals 4 to the power 4. And in the numerator we get 2i times e to the power uh, minus 4 times 4i squared. 4i squared equals minus 16, so we get a minus 32 times i. Minus uh, z plus 2i equals 4i, so minus 8i times e to the power minus 4. So the residue of f of z equals 5 prime at 2i equals uh, minus 40i divided by e to the power 4 times 4 to the power 4. And you can uh, get rid of uh, some uh, rubbish. Uh, 40 over 4 to the power 4 equals 10 divided by 4 to the power 3 uh, equals 5 by divided by 4 times 4 times 2. So 5 divided by 32. And we have a minus i to times e to the power 4. So, and of step 2. So the integral along c total fz dz equals 2 pi i times minus 5 i over 32 times e to the power 4. Step 3. Parameterize here are your l r. Well, that's easy. You can just choose z equals x. Then the integral along l r will be the integral from minus r to r. Uh, and you can plug in z equals x everywhere. dz becomes dx. And you get e to the power 2 i x divided by x squared plus 4 squared. And that's exactly, by the way, the one you want to have because that's equal to this one. That was step 3. Step 4. Uh, get rid of the integral along CR. Well, we can use an ML estimate because the norm of uh, f of z equals uh, on uh, z equals r to the power e i theta, the norm z squared plus 4 squared over here, and here we have the norm e to the power 2 i r times cos theta plus i sine theta. Well, we can estimate the z squared plus 4. We use the triangle inequality. It's bigger equal than, so the norm of a plus b is bigger equal than the absolute value of norm a minus norm b. So it's bigger equal than uh, the absolute value of the norm of z squared minus norm of 4. Well, on the uh, upper half circle, the norm of z squared equals r, so we get the r squared minus 4, an absolute value of that. And we, you, uh, well, r will go to an infinity, so r will be very large. So that equals r squared minus 4. And then we can estimate the norm of f of z. The norm of e to the power 2i r cosine theta is just 1, so we are left with e to the power minus 2r sine theta. Well, 2 r and sine theta are all positive because theta is between 0 and pi, which means that you have e to the power minus something positive, it's smaller equal than 1, divided by r squared minus 4 squared, which we can take as our mr. So on cr, f of z is bounded by this mr, that means that the norm of integral is smaller equal than this mr times l equals the, the length of the curve equals pi times r, uh, times mr equals 1 over r squared minus 4 squared. Uh, ah, if you take the limit, we see this is going to work out, because you, if you take the limit r to infinity, you say, see that uh, this factor is going to zero. You can use L'Hopital's rule, or you divide by the highest power, or whatever. So you can show that this limit equals zero, which means that the limit for r to infinity of the norm of the integral equals zero. And if the uh, limit of the norm equals zero, then the limit of the integral itself equals zero for r to infinity. And of step four. You see, it's already uh, 
in not a too difficult example, still quite a big step to get rid of this integral along your big curve. And then step five, wrap everything up. Well, the integral along c total, still finite from minus r to r and a cr uh, circle. So this equals integral from minus r to r fx, uh, fx dx plus integral along cr fz dz. Uh, and then you can solve for your integral from minus r to r. It equals 2 pi i times the sum of the residues, which we computed before, equals 5 pi over 16 e to the power 4 minus your integral along cr for any r which is uh, big enough. Now we want to know our integral, but we, uh, in order to be able to get rid of uh, this term over here, uh, we have to take limit from r to infinity. Well, that's fine. Take limit from r to infinity, left hand side equals limit r to infinity on the right hand side. And we've shown in step uh, four this, that uh, this integral uh, vanishes. So you have on the left hand side your principal value of your integral and on the right hand side the number. So uh, now uh, we know our, our uh, original uh, integral uh, uh, co uh, converges. Uh, you can show this by methods for you learned at real analysis. So the principal value equals improper integral. Uh, then you can take real parts on both sides. So you get the, the real part, it's power to i x equals to cosine x. So then we are over here. And uh, the real part of 5 pi over 16 e to the power of 4, which is 5 pi times 16 over e to the power of 4. So if you would have some Im imaginary parts here, it would, uh, it would be vanish right on this step. Um, and then finally, you use the symmetry to get your original uh, integral which is just half of this. So your original integral from zero to infinity of your cosine equals five pi over 32 to e to the, uh, e to the power of four. So uh, there uh, you have your Fourier integral. Well, you see, you have to take a lot of steps. You have to do a lot of work, but all of that is kind of algorithmic. The really big thinking takes place at the first step. Now if you do your first step correctly, all the other steps will follow naturally. Really